This time on Backshed, I've dragged this old girl out of a wrecking yard. It's a 1963 Ford Falcon Ute. Stick around and take a look. So if you're watching from the States, you'd know this little guy is a Ranchero, but over here in Australia, they were marketed under the Falcon badge. And this guy being a 63, it's known as the XL Falcon. But doesn't matter what you call it, Ranchero or Falcon, they're cool. So a few months back, we came across a wrecking yard of which we've bought six cars from. And obviously this is one of them. And it wasn't out the front with the good cars to keep like the HQ from episode 22. This was out the back in the wrecking yard section. This one was probably going to be parted out over time. And I'll show you the original footage of the first day that I saw it in the pissing rain. And you'll see a 77, 78-ish HZ Holden sedan. Uh, there's another, I think that's an XP Falcon up there. And as we move over to the left there, you'll see the back of him just there. I like these and the idea of a little Windsor V8 in them. That's fairly complete, that thing. That particular day I was there to pick up my HQ wagon and I'd actually bought another vehicle that same day, which was an EK. So when we went back a few weeks later to pick up my EK, it wasn't pissing rain and a lot had changed. The back of the wrecking yard had been compressed into one area. Cars had been piled up on top of each other, but she was still in one piece and I couldn't help but go back over and just have another look around her. I think I'm gonna grab this little fella. He's very complete. Just look around. Like Unbelievable what's here. I had a little bit closer look that day, but with the long grass and that sort of thing, I could really only run my hands down the sills and it wasn't full of rust. So I didn't stuff about. I shook the man's hand and said, I'll be back shortly to pick him up. So when I went back to pick it up, there was a bit of a rush on to get everything out of there. The, the premises had sold where the yard used to be and it was just go 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 so i wasn't actually able to film getting it out of the yard um, it was pretty much just hitch the winch up drag it on and get out of the way so they could keep doing what they're doing so i winched him onto the trailer got the hell out of there and that's where we'll start off just got some sketchy seats out of something else but look all bent and a lot of that I don't really know what's been taken off here. There's a lot of little holes there. And there's a not so small hole there. But we can fix that. Under here is very complete. Doesn't look like it's been going in a long time. Not sure what the rope was holding on. Not the battery, that's for sure.
This is the reason I wanted him. He's not rotted out. That's about the extent of his sill rust there. Other than that, that sill is pretty good. The quarters are pretty good. Yeah, anyway, we'll put a nice little patch in there somewhere. All in all, not a bad starting point, I reckon. Anyhow. First job is change out some wheels because that one's off the rim, the other one's completely shot. So we'll swap out some wheels, get him to roll off. So that's it for this episode, but seriously, I had a total different path planned for this one. I like these little utes as old school drag cars, up in the nose, skinnies on the front, fats on the rear, maybe gasser-ish, but I needed some wheels on it to roll it off the trailer, and I had these. I was going somewhere to pick up a car and they're a marketplace I thought I'm passing through the town I'll just grab them something will come up and to my surprise they actually fit on the rear 18 by 8 and zero offset what do we got here seventeen by 7 and 6 millimeter offset just there, ET6. Anyway, I'm easy. I don't hate them, so I'm just gonna roll with it. It's got a little bit of damage here and there. But when you get to the parts that matter, he's not rusted out. He's thin, don't get me wrong. In the bottom of the door and over the wheel arch there. Fortunately, she's got a door trim missing. But the door's not rotted out. Well, that'd be handy. A key, and it actually turns. And all the glass is there, not broken, so I'm not chasing around for bits and pieces. I was a little surprised in the bed. He's not rotted out across there. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, a fuel pump. Well, that's probably our first issue. Oh. I found the door trim. It's a shame. The bed's not destroyed. The wheel arches aren't flogged out. And like I can say, having the glass intact is a good thing. This wheel arch is a little bit dented, but not too bad. Oh, the accelerator pedal. There's the window winders. That's a bit of a shame. Anyway, I'll see if I can straighten that. Why has it got another one of them? That one doesn't have holes in it. Maybe that's it. I wasn't really concerned too much about the motor and transmission because fixing a motor or swapping a motor is a hell of a lot easier than replacing sill panels or quarter panels. So I didn't bitch too much. I just grabbed it. It's completely empty, but that's fine. Pretty sure that's a later model 
alternator because it's got a regulator in the back of it but it's all there that doesn't look great no that's not great I'll ignore that that fuel pump's still hooked up so maybe maybe that pump in the back wasn't off this car hopefully that fuel line's still connected to the pump maybe it was just thrown in there from something else well I think I found my first job that bonnet was really hard to open and there's why the hinge is obviously seized up to the point where it snapped that off I just dented the corner there a little bit yeah I'll get the welder onto that it'll be fine so that really wasn't a hard decision for me when it's not that rusty you know there's a little bit and being very very complete under the bonnet I'm pretty confident of this one we can bring him back to life so let's stop talking and get into it we'll get this old battery out so I dare say, well, that's not even done up I dare say that's no good and I'll look for a date on that a bit later on see if I can get a better idea of how long it's been parked I like them when they're this complete though. It sort of indicates that maybe it drove and then got bits missing and that's not that bad but when they got bits missing and that you sort of wonder why. It's holding that on. Come on, come off. I haven't actually tried to turn this one over yet. Because like I said, it wasn't rusty. Well, not completely rusty. And so I didn't really care. I do care, but not a lot. I'll just deal with whatever it's, whatever comes. So I guess that's where we'll start. The carb looks like it's in one piece. So I guess we'll just try and roll him over. Ooh. Ooh, the car doesn't roll away on me. Just put some pressure on that belt. I might be able to get it. To... <coughs> I'll try a socket on the balancer first. It's not much room. underneath. Yeah, there she goes. Yeah, it's gonna roll over. I have to come up from underneath though. The radiator hose is in the way. That's not going to work. The fan's hitting on my ratchet. So I can only turn it. What size is it? I'll get a ratchet spanner. Oh, yeah, that's going to go. Oh, there's a little hard spot there. I'll just have a bit of a ridge. Well, you can hear the compression. As I turn this, you can actually hear it hissing. That's the compression. So it's got some cylinder pressure. Oh, got easy there. tight there well it's rolling over um, it does feel a little tight in one spot and a bit easy in 
another spot but that would make sense it's probably got a valve that's not shutting properly that would be the easier section and maybe a ridge in one of the cylinders from a bit of moisture and that would be the tight spot but everything looks pretty good wiring wise so I think I might just chuck a battery in it and move that socket fits. Can't get them off though. No sparks. It's a good sign. Actually I might leave that loose just in case I'm gonna pull him off quick. <laughs> That's a sign of confidence isn't it? Just make sure there's not any smoke or anything going on in here because there's plenty to burn. Let's see if we've got dash lights. We have got dash lights. Ooh. slow but it's winding nothing's hot actually I might disconnect that fuel line just in case that pump wants to work and there's a heap of junk in that pump so if it's gonna wind and there is something in that pump I sort of don't want it traveling up into here probably not the biggest issue this car's got right at this point but I might just disconnect that I might just disconnect that fuel line just in case it is still trying to draw any ugliness or evil through that line into the pump. Actually, I might disconnect that too and put that in some fuel and see if it winds over if it's actually going to pump. Yeah, I'll do that. So we'll disconnect, we'll disconnect the pump, uh, put a jug of fuel down there, see if the pump wants to suck it up and disconnect there and see if it wants to push it out so I can test the pump while I'm winding on the engine. Yeah, we'll do that. So at least that way if I'm winding on it, we start to get some fuel, you know, spurting everywhere. I can figure out if we've actually got a pump that works. It, um, when it wound, you could all sort of see it. It's got a tight section and a an easy section like there's no compression so I doubt if it starts I doubt it's going to run on all five to st oh, six six it's a six cylinder dickhead count them I doubt it'll run on all six it might run on five that fuel line's actually perished anyway but you know I'd be happy with four or five to start with and then we'll just work on one or two Oh, that didn't sound great. I might just cut that. That's posing too much of an issue for me right now. Is it wrong to seem confident that that fuel, it doesn't stink like varnish? Yes, it is probably wrong to seem confident, but anyway. That there is a screw-on fitting. And it's actually got a glass bowl. Maybe it's easier if I come in from the front. That fuel doesn't look that bad. Hmm. Okay, so here's what I've done. Disconnected that fuel line. Got a bottle there so I can see if the pump's going to pump anything. And I've run a hose from the back of the fuel pump up around and to there, to that little bottle. And ignore the colour of the bottle. That's just a little bit of two-stroke in that. Just for a bit of lube, I just didn't want to put that guy here, just in case, because it's not clamped or anything. So I'll give him a little wind and see if that pump will work. 
It's impossible to tell. It's just winding way too slow. Well. So I reckon we just throw a bit of fuel at it and hit it or not because there's no oil on the dipstick it's got a drain plug so maybe it's just low you know when your confidence level was way way high and then just something and it goes crashing to the ground well, that that's right now look at this so when you look at the pan from the side it looks pretty normal got a drain plug a little bit of a little bit of oil there you know nothing nothing crazy but when you look from the front but when you come in from this angle, that's a big dent, and that's a hole. Hmm. So that's why there's no oil on the dipstick. So that would explain no oil. Oh well. I'll push him over to the welder and weld it. But why is there no oil? Down the bottom of the car you think if they you think if they bottomed it out punch it a hole in it there'd be oil everywhere there should be oil everywhere like all down the car then again it has had a long time to dry so that's where the confidence level just went did they bottom it out run it out of oil lock it up well it's not locked up Anyway, I guess we'll find out. Because you'd think if they bottomed it out and they were travelling, there'd be oil all the way along the bottom of the car. But there's not. It's relatively clean. And that sump's still got you know, traces of oil on it, so if it's still got traces of oil there, it'd still be on the floor of the car, it's not like it's been washed down. Kinda of wishing I didn't wind on that so much now. I guess it's probably the least of its concerns if it's been driven, dropped its oil. Just hope the oil light works. Anyway, I won't overthink it, we'll just get him over there and weld him up. <laughs> So all I'm going to do is get the wire wheel and just wire wheel all around there, clean it all up. Actually, I'll tell you what I will do. I'll take that drain plug out because that looks like it's maybe even touching the drain plug and that'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Weld that up and end up welding the sump to the drain plug. So I'll knock that drain plug out first. Why am I getting dripped on? Oh, that's that radiator hose. Actually, I wonder if there's going to be a little bit left in it. I might get some. Because there'll be no future in welding this sump plug to the sump. None at all. that is to the pickup 
when you're welding something like that make sure you clean it down with something extremely flammable just for that added excitement when you go your first weld that's actually got a bit of braise or something on it that gold mark there I wonder if somebody's already had a go at it it doesn't look like something's hit it though like it, have a look from this angle I can't tell I don't know if that's a impact that way or I wonder if it just slid off a jack or something stranger things have happened anyway I'll stop talking and get it welded the hard bits I want it somewhere clean I cleaned up the edge of the sump here Let's try and get my earth strap on that's not really a lot to grab onto stop whinging doesn't suit you so all welded up and I didn't show you because I forgot to press record oh you didn't press record you idiot but I've just gone around the outside of the hole and then slowly moved to the middle so it's it's welded up I think it'll be fine maybe does that mean the oil's still on fire that's a vent tube I wonder if I can see any fire inside the sump. No, I don't see any. He's definitely smoking though. And while I was under the car, I found some amazingness. Check out that for a custom clamp. It's pop riveted, a hose clamp on, I don't know, what is that? Is that a speedo drive? That's a handbrake cable. That's ingenious. So with the sump weld it up whether it leaks or not I guess we'll see and with the hinge done time for some oil and no this isn't a greaser um, sometimes when I get older junk like this running I'll put a diesel engine oil in them because diesel engine oils like an old school diesel engine oil because um, they're high in detergents so they're actually you know give it a bit of a clean and this is out of the HQ. I actually did 500 Ks and dumped the oil. So this is 500 kilometer old diesel engine oil from the HQ. And because my confidence level is now extremely low on this car, I'm just putting it in. Rather than going and wasting 50 bucks on five liters of oil, I'll just put this shit in. It'll be fine. Probably going to run out of the sump anyway. Actually, you know what I should do? I should um, I should knock that filter off and cut it open. Let's do that. Let's get that filter off. I had to stop and think about that. Just stop and think which way. It had to go. It's a very technical. What's that doing? This is the moment where hopes and dreams come to die probably. We're going to tip this out on something now. I'll cut him open. Oh, 
Well, it's not great, but I'm not seeing large chunks of metal. So my confidence is rising again, ever so slightly. I'd say if this thing did run out of oil and chew up some bearings, there'd be some fairly substantial metal shavings in there. And the only shit I can see is where I've butchered around that, that cartridge. I don't know. I don't know. Is confidence building? Should it not be? Let's have a go. Well, so far the oil's staying in the motor. There's none on the ground just yet. I might crack that oil sender and wind it over and if you get if I get oil spewing out, I've got pressure. So I'll just crack that sender. And that's the little oil sender there. So if I just back him out a bit, just to create a leak, um, and then wind it over, I'll be able to see if I've got oil gushing out of there. I'm not usually creating oil leaks. Usually I'm trying to chase them. Anyway, I'll give it a crack now, see if it, see if it spins any faster too. Nothing yet. It wasn't winding very quickly though. You know what? I think I'm done dicking around. I'm throwing some fuel in that thing. So just filling the, or trying to fill the bowl via the vent tube in the top of the carburetor. Let's see if we make some noise. I won't bother checking spark, it'll tell me if there's spark. Well, it started to wind and then stopped. I might give that starter a hit. The starter's probably been sitting that long. Just give him a little tap. See if he winds again now. No would be the answer to that question. I'll just put it in gear and rock it and see if I can rock the starter that way. So why are you hitting the starter with a hammer? What's that going to do? Well, I'll explain what it's going to do. The start is a little electric motor and they have a round armature and carbon brushes that push onto the side of the armature and right around the outside of the armature. Well over time, carbon dust builds up and especially if they've been sitting for a long time, you'll find that they'll actually stick and the brushes won't contact the armature properly. So sometimes a little tap of the hammer, brushes unstick, they ride on the armature and all of a sudden it works again. That didn't happen in this case. So let me explain the next thing, and that is rocking the car in gear. That starter sounds pretty weak. It's obviously been sitting for a long time, and it's, it's probably full of surface rust and all sorts of shit inside. So there's two gears. There's your flex plate gear, and there's your starter gear, and they mesh into one another. And so what's probably happening there is the gears are touching onto the top of each other and don't have the power to force their way in. So by putting it in gear and rocking it, you're essentially rocking the gears together. Once it's meshed in, hit the key, away she went. She's clearly pretty weak, we might have to do something with that later. But for now, it's starting again. Got our oil pressure. Well, I think I can do up my oil sender. We've definitely got pressure because if I roll the car back, there's my oil. So we've got oil pressure. And it, it started to run. 
I'll see if I can get some more fuel in that and see if I can't get it to run a bit longer. That was a lot of oil really quickly. So I'm going to say yes, it has good oil pressure. I'll do that back up, huh? Still no fuel in that bottle though. I'm just trying to see if it's got an accelerator pump. I don't think it does. Well, it probably has one. It's just not working. Let's have another go. We've got fuel so the pump's working and when that changes colour to that green I'll shut him off and I might even connect him back up see if it'll run off the off the pump is that looking green now that's just idling oh she didn't like that didn't like that at all, sorry. Oh, it's running out of fuel. That's all it is, it's just running out of fuel. It's actually running pretty bloody well. No lights on. So it's clearly sucking fuel, it's nearly drank all of that, but that's filthy, so I am sort of glad I, I did run it through that pump. But I think now we can connect that back to the carburetor. That'll tell me genuinely if that float is stuck and put some more fuel in that, and we might see if it'll just sit there and build some temperature and... It's got a little bit of water still in it. Yeah, all right, going good. So I'll reconnect this hose back up. That fitting's been butchered. That's been ground down. Oh well. Whatever. It works, I suppose. I'll refill my fuel tank. Give her another hit, I suppose. Maybe still some fuel down the guts. I'm not that familiar with this, these little carbies. But you'd think that it should have an accelerator pump, and if it does, it's not working. So, that's the accelerator pump. Doesn't like it when I touch the throttle. If that float is sticking, just giving it a tap sometimes will, will dip it down. Doesn't like that at all. So it's sitting there and idling, but it's really, really unhappy when I try and open the throttle. And I 
can't really tell. I think it's one cylinder down. It's quiet. It's super quiet. Not a ton of smoke either, that's a good thing. And that fuel pump came in handy. That's a wheel chop. Be really not happy when I'm opening that throttle. So I'd say it's got a accelerator pump somewhere, but it's clearly not happy. That little unsteady shake, if you watch the leads there, you can see it's got a real unsteady shake to it. Sort of tells me one of those cylinders isn't isn't quite firing. So what's going on there? What's with the, the touching of the cylinder head? Well, if you get in early enough, before the cylinder head starts to transfer heat right throughout the head, you can actually touch around the spark plug and it'll become really, really obvious which one's not running, the temperature difference. And then to confirm if that is the case, just pull the spark lead off. If the engine doesn't change, you know that's the one that's not running. Do be prepared to get zapped when you pull that plug lead though. It does happen sometimes, but hey, it's probably the most fun thing you'll do all day. Yeah, just I thought, I number one's not running. Oh, it's got spark though. Now I can tell it's got spark, listen. You can actually hear it cracking. I'm just gonna let it idle for a bit. It might pick up that cylinder. It could be, it actually could be poor fuel delivery making it miss like that. It might be a little bit lean, it might not be getting enough. running. I wonder if that clutch will work. It's one way to tell if that clutch works and that's switch it off, put it in gear, put the clutch in and wind it and if it jumps forward. So let's do that. I'll be able to tell if the clutch works. Oh this seat is shit house. If I put it in gear, put the clutch in and wind it, if it leaps forward or backwards you know the clutch isn't working. So that should be reverse. This is shit house, but anyway. Oh. Oh, we better do something about all this shit. So, clutch in. It doesn't sound happy when you're letting the clutch out. Is my throttle gonna work? Oh, she's still a little bit unhappy, but. Here we go. What is that noise? I don't know what 
that noise was, but it's gone. I have zero brakes. Come on, girl. Here she goes. Woohoo! I can't actually see a hell of a lot, but she's going. Whoop. I wasn't kidding, I nearly ran into the friggin' bushes. got no brakes so to just stop her I think I'm just gonna have to turn her off yep that's how I'm gonna stop her just turn her off <laughs> so it's a good start it's a great start actually Let's see if she'll restart That throttle's getting better too. Just that little bit of fuel going through the motor. You know what? I'm not keen. I think I'm going for another drive. I'm going to try and run as much fuel through that as I can. No brakes is a bit of an issue though. See if the, the pedal's got any feel to it, is it just stiff? Oh, there's nothing there. Just go straight to the floor. I'd say that that piston in that master is stuck in. Well, that's not great. Well, it's beer time and I think she's earned it, not me today. Clearly it wants to come back to life. That is not how I expected the day to go, especially when I saw the dent in the sump and the hole. I expected to find a big end knock or something like that and I thought right about now I'd be pulling a carburetor off to completely rebuild it and to, to prove I'm not talking shit I I preempted it I actually bought a carburetor rebuild kit for today thinking well that's definitely going to be the thing that needs to be done and I'm just gonna press pause on that for now it still doesn't like it when you open the throttle. It's sort of hesitating a bit, but I'm just gonna leave it. Now, having said that, generally what happens is if there is any junk in it, it's now got fresh fuel in it, it softens the junk, and then it starts traveling. So we could still end up doing that tomorrow. But for now, like same as the wheels, I'm just gonna roll with it. That wasn't the plan, but roll with it. So I reckon, first thing in the morning and wash it down there was something crawling on me as we went for that little drive so i'm going to do something with inside just clean it out and as far as the outside goes i'm still up in the air i, I don't think i'm going to clear coat this one well not yet anyway for now i'll just give him a good wash and a scuff down just a scotch bright just to clean him up and we'll go from there anyway that's it for today i'll see you in the morning we'll get stuck into washing him nice and early up early this morning first thing we're gonna do is make sure it still starts and then we're gonna start cleaning out inside get all this crap out get those shitty seats out and then just start cleaning off the paintwork see what we've got and what I say make sure it still wants to run like I said yesterday if there's any 
dried fuel or anything in the bottom of that carburetor. Fresh fuel softens it up and it ends up blocking idle circuits etc. So I'm going to try and run this a fair bit today just in case it is the case and we can just flush it through rather than letting it sit. So I'll give him a crank down see if we go. You might need my little accelerator pump. We still might be rebuilding a car be after all. It's going to make a lot of sense to put that kit through it anyway. I don't want it just to run, I want it to run well. The other thing it could be if that if that bowl could be leaking down too, so I'll check the oil level in a second, see how you feel in it. Well he wants to live. I think we'll do that carburetor anyway. Right, we'll stop tossing about and get inside cleaned out. I well, guess first of all, let's get all this tumbleweed out. There's heaps of little treasures in here. So the accelerator, two Falcon badges. I don't know where that one's off. But even these little guys. Still, oh, in the tarp clips. Put all them back on. More handles, a chain. I found handles, but the little clips are missing. So I've probably got no chance of finding them. We'll see. There's a little hole there. I found another one there. And we'll get that tank out later too. For now we'll just get him all washed down. I'm going to remove this trim because the other one, as you saw, was in the back. Buggered. Um, so I'm going to need this as a template. So I don't really want to wet that and destroy it. But I really want to wash this door out, so we'll, we'll take this guy off. A bit stabby. That's about as random as it gets. Like, what is that for? I could use it as a scribe. 
Anyway, that's random. Oh, that's good. I was hoping it didn't have anything too evil in there. And the cardboard in the glove box is still good, so I'm going to try and not wet that. Another 10 cent piece. Get him out on the grass and we'll wash him down. I think I'll just push him because I've got no seat now. Might just push it. See if I can cover up this carby because I really want to pressure clean everything. Let's just stop anything going down there for now. Sure, I probably will pull that carburetor off, but just for now, I do want to give a bit of a pressure clean just to try and get some of the crap off. Oh, my fuel tank, put a lid on here. Find a lead first. Don't water in the fuel. To wash down, I'm not using anything fancy. It's just regular old workshop degreaser. I'm just spraying around all the paint. And I'm going to go around the body with Scotch Bright. If you go to an automotive paint store, you're probably going to find something like that. That's maroon Scotch Bright's quite coarse. I think the grey is a little bit finer. But that's for. For scuffing when you want to paint over something i'm just going to use your regular old kitchen variety green scotch bright it's just a clean just that off just get all this crap off so I'm not scuffing it to paint it we're just going to clean it off all right let's stop talking and get into it Thing I don't want to scotch bright offer is these little blokes. I think they had a bit of character, so I'll go gentle around them. But we'll just scotch everywhere else. I've already started with the bonnet, and you can see all that oxidization just coming off. The white crap. Just to give you a bit more of a close-up idea of what I'm trying to do, if you're just using a scotch bright, you see it starts to bring those rust stains off and just takes the sunburn or the oxidization off. And I'll just wash that down so you just brings a bit of colour back. all that crap off there it'll just brighten him up 
I don't think we'll clear coat this one just yet. I'll just clean all the, the paint up. That's still, it's okay. everywhere hood lining the whole lot I may as well wet it once let it dry out but I really want to get the tank out so I'm going to pull up on the washing now because I started to wash that goes way back underneath the floor and obviously the tank is in this side so I'm going to knock these off so I can get in there and wash all this down underneath the tank as well so we'll start disconnecting a few things and pull him out. Oh. I guess uh, that's one way of getting it off. Oh, I did the same. Not to worry. Actually, that hose isn't too bad. That's still quite flexible. And yes, that shocks me. I thought it would be as brittle as anything. I'll just do that just to clean that thread off. See if you can get as little rust as possible blocking up your thread. So it comes off nice and easy. If you do find that sort of shit is binding up with rust, go back on, like undo it till it gets tight, go back on, flush it with WD, just allow all the shitty rust to get away, otherwise you're just going to bind it up, maybe snap it off. What else is connected? How about the filler neck? Do you reckon that might be stopping it? Fair income. How the hell are you going to get it back? Oh, you know how I'm going to get it back. Yeah, so call me stupid, which it probably was pretty stupid. But I forgot about the filler neck. That's obviously connected to the top of the tank and there's going to be a, a rubber piece of hose that's connecting the two from the spout to the tank. But the only way to get at it is through that panel. So I'll take all this paneling off and it's all one piece. I guess I'll just go along and undo all those screws and take it out. removed the cover plate 
and remove the filler neck. I've just bagged him up. It's still going to be a pain because that rubber hose is still quite a bit higher than the tank. But I can't actually get to the clamp at the bottom of that hose. It's about, it's about here. Which is still above that lip there. So it's still going to be a bit of a pain to get out. But we'll have a go now. And yeah, that was pretty dumb. Here's where that's going to... Oh, I can already smell fuel. That's not a good sign. It means it's leaking. Actually, I wonder if I can get the clamp now. How long is it? Is it real long? Pretty long. I can fold it over from back. I just don't want to tear it. I just wasn't holding my mouth right. And it doesn't look that bad. One of the main reasons I wanted to pull it out was to clean in there, but the other one, the other reason is I was expecting it to be rusted out. But maybe being in the cab has actually been good for it. Oh, what's that there? Now I'll clean it down, put some fuel in it, and well, clean it out and put some fuel in it and see if it leaks but right now that's the really only concern there maybe there Cover surprised me how good it was. It's not rusty at all. And while I've got it off, I take the chance to get down inside that quarter and pressure clean everything. Get all the dirt and muck and mud. If you see the colour of that water, that's because there's that much silt and dust in there. And it's not the water that causes the rust, it's the dirt and shit in that quarter that trap the moisture that causes the rust. So while I've got the opportunity, I'm going to stick this little fella down in there and press, him, and press the clean hell out of it. I just keep on blocking them along the back like that and I'm getting big handfuls of mud and shit. The water level must be past that one now. So tanks cleaned off and I pulled the sender out. But as I suspected, we're going to need a new one there. It's seized up solid. And if you can cast your eye on the tank, It's not great. The trouble with this one is, if you saw from the last episode, I just put acid in it and cleaned it all out. The problem with this one is, all the holes are in the bottom. And I'm shattered because this looked great when I pulled it out, but there's holes there. There's more around that corner. More there. All around. That's the recess for the float to, to drop right down to empty. All around that. And it doesn't end there, there's more there, more there. The only one thing I'm hoping different from, from when we did the HQ wagon tank is I don't know if I can get one or not. I know they do a reproduction tank for the sedan, but I just want to see if I can get one, maybe even out of the States for a Ranchero. Because these old girls aren't super popular out here anymore. There's not many of them left. So... 
before I go diving into that, making a million patches, I'll do a little bit of research, see if I can't get another tank, because that is way worse than the HQ tank. There's holes everywhere, tiny little pinholes. Anyway, I'll fire them back up. I'll chuck the seat in. I did clean up one seat. That one I didn't bother with. Because it's half, you no, know, half rooted. This one, I just cleaned him up. I need something to sit on, so I'll just chuck that back in for the time being. So we'll chuck that back in and we'll get him up to the shed again. Not putting that shit back in. That's probably the other thing I'll chase up tonight, I think. A fuel tank. Well, see if I can chase up a fuel tank. And I might actually ring my mate where I got this from and just see if he's got a bench. Maybe that other ute, I think, in the footage at the, at the start, there was another 65, I think, XP. I wonder if it's got a seat in it. Because it was pretty incomplete, it'd been pulled apart. So I wouldn't feel bad taking a seat out of that one. That's pretty, that's pretty mint. Oh. That's excellent. Oh, that buckle just got me right in the ass. So we'll see how much washing it affected him. Just a little bit. To get it going, got to try now. Well, she wants to go. She still doesn't like that accelerator, but she's running. As said, three on the tree on this one as well, so closed and up is reverse. Ooh, there's that noise again. I think that's a spigot bearing, isn't it? Thrust bearing. Yeah, so towards you and up is, is reversed. Towards you and down is first. That should be second, third. So one, two, Three. Jesus Christ, that clutch bearing sounds terrible. Better get up there before it shits itself. Oh, and I've stalled it. Top driving. Been driving long? I'd say we're going to rebuild that carby. There's no accelerator pump at all. I'm going to have to use my little field drum again. Don't stall it this time, idiot. And I stalled it. Coughing. That's sort of telling me leaning out. Um, maybe, maybe a vacuum leak, or maybe just the idle circuit is really blocked. But either way.
Well, I think that little fiasco confirmed it for me. I'm not going to fight with that carburetor. It's clearly either got one, a vacuum leak, and that's your vacuum advance. If on the distributor there, that diaphragm is perforated, and that would be the hesitating, or, and this is probably what I think it is, that the accelerator pump on this guy is not working, if it has one, and it's not injecting that little bit of fuel that it needs every time you go to open the throttle. So rather than fight with it, I've got the kit there. Let's get this thing off and let's rebuild him. So that's the carburetor off. I'm just going to remove this little clip here and that linkage, just take that guy off. And also this bracket here, I'll knock him off as well. Just so then I can submerge him in some, in the bucket, in degreaser and something like that. I sometimes soak them in fuel if I'm going to soak them overnight. But this guy has already got a little bit of fuel run through him, so Sort of hoping we can just pull a few things off, dunk him in some degreaser, and do it right now rather than wait. I need a Phillips head just to take this lid off, and I'll put some degreaser in that guy. So there's obviously a few bolts around the top there, well, screws. So I'll spare you the pain of watching me undo a carburetor lid. It's literally as simple as undoing the screws and lifting it off, and then dealing with whatever you find on the way in. Right, I'm gonna dunk that in there, um, give it half an hour and then start scrubbing. Right, so here's where we're at. I don't know if you can see down in that little port there, but there's one hole there on that right hand side. There's one hole there on that left hand side and that's where that accelerator pump or plunger, whatever you want to call it, should slide down there. The hole on the right hand side is joined to this fella here. So that's where it would take the fuel in, into that section there. And it should, when you plunge that, when you plunge that down like that, it should send it into the throat somehow. I don't know how, I'm not, I've never pulled one of these particular ones apart, but it wasn't happening. To stop the field now coming back this way, I found a little ball bearing in the bottom of my bucket that actually blocks that orifice so the fuel can't go back into the bowl. And when I was plunging it down, it just wouldn't go anywhere. You'd plunge it, nothing would ha happen, it'd just build pressure. However, what I did was tipped a tiny bit of hydrochloric acid into that little bore there because the other port going this way at the bottom of that going that way if you see that fella there must have been blocked so now when I put my plunger in and you'll see just here now we've got carby cleaner coming out that <clears throat> so if I refill that again put the plunger back in and I block that hole there because there's no hole in the top of that plate that's where it sits there just where that that mark cast mark is there so that is actually blocked so if I block off that and I plunge it with my other finger. It's a really obvious stream. So that passage is cleaned out. I'll flush this guy out, clean him out. I'll start cleaning up the body, finish him off and start whacking him back together. And don't lose that little ball bearing. Nearly there.
that's the carby all back together and cleaned up to the best of my ability i didn't go too crazy with the cleaning of the outside of it i just got all the grime and shit off it but there's a couple of things at play here number one the power valve was different now i'm hoping it's just an updated version and it does the same job i can't see why it wouldn't be and the jet that i removed from in the bowl the one that came with the kit was huge so i just put the old jet back in it let's face it it it's just a hole in a brass jet there's probably different models because it did come with a couple of different accelerator pump plunger sizes but here's something else but there's a couple of things i checked while the carburetor was off and that is this is the vacuum advance line running down to the distributor there and you've heard me say before the way to check a vacuum advance is just suck on that line see if it builds pressure and it did not so clearly that vacuum advance canister has a perforated diaphragm but i can't find a bolt with the same thread to put in the carburetor so i'm going to screw it back in undo it from down there and just block it off and then this one that's your fuel line so what's this guy well that's another vacuum line i didn't know that but it runs down along there and down to the fuel pump and i am not familiar with why i've never worked on one of these 144 cubic inch sixes before and so i've never dealt with that pump and i'm a bit puzzled as to why it has a vacuum line running to it i'm wondering if that should run to somewhere else this is well prior to emissions so it's not a missions thing but we'll get the carby back on so if you're super familiar with these and you can tell me what that vacuum line does to that carburetor ah fuel pump the vacuum line to the fuel pump tell me i don't know school me tell me what it's for back on I'll take that um, vacuum line off the vacuum advance and block it so I won't have to spray any down the carburetor this time because when I pump the throttle if you remember just in that corner there a fair way down there so I don't know if you'll see it but you can actually hear it Well, that might have to be it for today because I just ran out of fuel and I don't have any more. It did run pretty good there. So that's probably it for today. First thing in the morning, I'll duck up and get some fuel because I'm out. I've completely ran out, but it's beer time. I'm not driving anywhere. Although I haven't got that quite right yet, it's still a good day. Washing everything down, Scotch Bright and the whole show. Um, it looks a lot a lot cleaner, a lot neater. I'll do some research on a fuel tank, see if I can get one of them. Order a sender, because irrespective of if I can get a tank, I still need the sender. Do a little bit of research on that fuel pump too, to see why it's got a vacuum line running to it and what it's actually supposed to do. I, I don't know. Anyway, that'll do for today. I'll see you in the morning. So up early this morning, and she cold started pretty good with the vacuum lines blocked but out here is as windy as hell this morning so let's move her inside and we'll talk a little about what i learned last night what i learned last night sounds creepy i know and don't let your mind wander too far on that one but just with the vacuum line why is there a vacuum line running from the carburetor to the fuel pump well if you're like me and didn't know that, it's because the fuel pump on these guys has two diaphragms. It's got a lower diaphragm, which pumps fuel. It's a fuel pump. 
and it's got an upper diaphragm which is actually a small vacuum booster the vacuum booster to run the wipers so the carburetor vacuum is boosted through the fuel pump or in this case through the vacuum booster that is also activated by the fuel pump which runs the wipers you learn something new every day I've had vacuum wipers before and some old Holdens but I've only ever had one of these cars and I never mucked with the fuel pump so I didn't know that you learn something new and I also ordered a fuel tank sender and I've got the same companies that's supplying the sender chasing up to see if they can get a tank we don't make one here locally in Australia I don't think I can wait for this tank you know what screw that let's do this tank so like I say this one's not pretty there's holes there there all around that corner more there that's a big one there so I'm gonna have to put a I'll probably cut that hump completely off around there just to keep it flat that one uh, I don't know maybe make it wider and fold it down there across here just tap it as I go and then I guess like you saw with the HQ tank but this one's a lot worse holes wise I'm gonna have to then maybe put some acid in it and just see if any well yeah I was gonna say if any more come out but they're definitely holes there and see if there's any more anyhow this could take a while so I started cutting small sections out and it escalated and it's not great but it's not greatness is surpassed by my impatience so we're just going to do this now and if you can see that bit was there and that's where the float dips into the float actually dips into that bit to measure right at empty so i'm gonna have to bend the float a little bit and if you look it was just riddled with holes and that bit's the same it's full of holes as well you can see all around the edge all around the corner they're just little pinholes everywhere which actually makes this one harder than the hq tank because the hq tank just had a little hole here and there this is very evenly spread so i think i'm actually going to end up finding a lot more little ones once i acid all that but for now i'll stop bitching and just get it done i made a big flat plate and I'll worry about cleaning that up later. That's the least of its worries right now. And I'm going to weld it over that whole section. And I'm just going to get a dolly and flatten those little sections there and there out. Just so I can go relatively flatly across the back there, down the side. And then I'll have to get these little isolated fellas there, there, and wherever else they decide to form i'll just have to go around and get them individually it might take me two or three goes to get them all and i might have to trial fill it but we'll get that in here goes So that's about as far as I've got with that. That whole plate's in. That one's in there. That just got bigger and bigger. And then I've got a heap of little plug welds. A couple across the top there. Actually, that one looks like I need to go back over it. And then there was more back here. And I've basically just run the grinder over everywhere I can just to see if there's any other pitting. Or... Anyway, that's as good as it gets. But I go halfway through that and I've devised a plan. If this fails, what I'll actually do is cut the whole base off the tank around there. Because that's double skin, that's the top half and the bottom half. So that's gonna be thicker. So if I fold up a base, same height, same length, out of fresh steel, and then put a lip on it, I've got a better chance of welding brand new fresh steel to that double skin and actually getting it to seal so that's what we'll do if this fails 
but well it's probably gonna fail so if you've seen the previous video with the HQ you know what the next step with that is I'm actually gonna flip it over fill it full of diluted hydrochloric acid to try and dissolve some of that rust and basically just see if it leaks so I don't we'll do that so I just gone around and I've just marked with red pen everywhere it's leaking it's mainly these little fellas which is the ones I've just sort of just welded along the holes rather than putting a patch in but my patch has got a couple little ones out the front here that's leaking and I just looked inside and went hey that's coming up really good uh, no idiot that's the inside of your patch panel so I'll give it a bit longer but I'll show you what it's doing so that's a piece of the inside of the tank and in this very elaborate container I've put a little bit of the acid and that piece there I just cut off that section and you'll see that end starting to clean up pretty good that's all I'm trying to do even on that side you can see it's cleaned up a bit nicer so I rinsed out the acid and filled him up with water and it's it's leaking from everywhere. I give it a good shake and stirred up the rust inside it. And I did mark a few, but there's probably about 20 more leaks in the bottom of that fuel tank. It's just getting worse. The more I shake it and agitate the rust inside of it, the more holes are appearing. So we don't often do it. But I'm going to concede defeat on that fuel tank. I'm going to do what I said. I'll chop the bottom off that fuel tank, buy myself a little metal folder, and just fold up the base, and then weld that fresh steel base to the top so it uses the original neck and, uh, and fuel gauge sender. But I'm not conceding defeat on the whole vehicle. The plan was drag it out of that wrecking yard, get it running, get it driving, and we've done that. Yeah, sure, the radiator pulls apart. And you can see through the floor. And I don't know if I can get a fuel tank because it's rusty and full of holes. I think it's pretty much only one thing to do. Let's go for a drive. In circles, of course, because you don't need brakes if you drive in circles. That carburetor's got a little miss in it. Oh, just got the seat buckle fair up my ass. How much stuff with fuel tanks lately? The plan is. This is the press up. Two to four. Welcome back. I don't know where you were filming then, man. That's way wonky on the piss, isn't it? If not, we'll work on it.
was a good one. Cylinder head. Now, see, now you've rattled me. I'm rattled now, train. Just wait one second, I think I just lost the part. Okay, see him doing shit. Get out. Take it out of gear, dickhead. Don't tell me. Did I not? That's um on wide lens, isn't it? Can't tell if it's going in or not. I would say not. Just looking at that. No. No, I can't. I can't get to it. Oh, you didn't fucking press record, you idiot. Maybe just a spanner. Oh God, seriously, seriously. Just when I was passing through a town, that was a very loud Harley. Was here, oh, with your shadow in the way, dickhead. And that last bit, if you saw it, looked fucking terrible. But if you've been here before, you know it ain't over. I've got bigger plans for this. But for now, do stick around, hit the buttons. Mucus is back in the next episode, and I'll see you then. But thanks for watching.